Hi everyone, John here from Look Smart Home Inspections right here in New Jersey. And I have to tell you, this has been a really tough real estate market both last year and the start of this year. What I'm seeing in New Jersey is that there, and most of the country is probably experiencing the same thing, is that there are a lot of buyers and hardly any houses for sale. And so we have all these buyers chasing a few houses and that is keeping prices high. And in my opinion, the pricing is gonna remain high for a while. So you buyers out there, I hate to break it to you, I think that we're gonna see not lower prices in at least New Jersey, but higher prices, uh, you know, a, a slow and steady climb, not the me meteoric rise that we've seen um, recently, but more of a steady, maybe five to 6%, um, you know, home price appreciation moving forward. And I think things will open up a little bit when interest rates come down. And I do believe that they will we will come down probably starting in, you know, mid-summer. And I think eventually, maybe by some midpoint of next year, we'll see, you know, mortgage rates around the 6% range, maybe 5.5%, 6%. And that's going to open up a little bit of supply on the supply side for houses in New Jersey, I believe. And that's going to make it a little bit easier for those of us who, you know, rely on real estate transactions to make a living. So we're just going to have to power through and everybody's having a tough time. Uh, home inspectors, agents, I would imagine, are having a tough time. Uh, brokers are having a tough time. Um, and, you know, lenders are probably having a tough time because there's just not a lot of volume uh, there. So we just have to power through and do the best we can. So if you're a buyer, things I believe will get a little bit better, although you're gonna still pay a king's ransom, uh, you know, for a house here in New Jersey or, you know, pretty much anywhere uh, in the Northeast. But I do think it's gonna get a little bit better. So in any event, um, I have another defects video for you guys. So here's some defects that I've recently found doing home inspections here. Um, and hopefully you can relate these defects to maybe a home that you own or maybe a home that you're thinking about buying or even just looking at to purchase. So let's take a look and see what we have. This is exactly how we do not want a flat roof to look. Every roof should have a nice gentle pitch away to direct water away to the gutters or area of discharge. But here we have a lot of water just laying on this roof surface and this is going to ultimately leak if it's not leaking already so no bueno here and uh, we're gonna let the client know that he's likely to need a roof replacement at least on this low sloped roofing section right here and this is why we do home inspections i'm taking a look under a low sloped roof this is an old house in an urban area we see a lot of water staining under this roof here. A little bit of damage here to the roof deck, the old roof deck. And as we pan around, we see just everywhere you look, there's water stains everywhere. And then if we come over here, more water stains. And then we have all these buckets of roofing tar right here. So when you're up in an attic and you see roofing tar like this, chances are things are not going to go well. And this is definitely an indication that they need a new roof. We're going to take a look from the outside. I'm going to put a camera pole up to take a look at the roof because I can't get access any other way. But when we see stuff like this, we just know that the roof is going to be in poor condition, especially when we see all this water staining all over the place and around the chimney here. So um, definitely look for water stains when you're buying a home or having a home inspection, crucially important. And there are multiple, multiple stains up in this uh, small attic space. When I'm looking at these old houses, what I like to do is pull back some of the siding if possible. Now, a lot of times we can't do this because we can't cause damage, but here the siding is loose. And if we look under here, we see some old asbestos siding right here. So this asbestos siding is not a great health hazard, but it's something we're definitely gonna let our client know. This is gonna be an investment property for our client. And if you leave this in place, you're fine. If you keep it covered, it's no issue. What you don't wanna do is start sanding this material 
and causing any kind of mechanical damages to it, that would be problematic. So over here we see a little bit of a, a piece of it has fallen off under the siding, under the, under the vinyl, and we kind of can see what that, you know, what that looks like. You see it's got that scalloped edge on it and some fibers here. So this is uh, likely to contain asbestos, not a big crisis of a problem, but something definitely the client is going to want to know about. When we have a driveway like this that's got a steep pitch to the front of the garage, we always have to make sure that we have a drain system in front of the garage. This drain system will help pipe water around the house so we don't get any water underneath the garage. So it's super important to keep this drain clean and free from obstruction, especially in the fall months, without a doubt. So always good when you when you guys are looking for a house that has a steep driveway and water is going to go towards the structure or the garage you always need to make sure that there's a drain here to pipe water away so water doesn't get under the garage doors we have this left short retaining wall here that's being pushed on by soil pressure behind the wall so as water pressure builds up behind the wall it exerts a high hydraulic pressure and it pushes the wall at a plumb like we see here. Now the issue here is that I don't know if this is part of the subject property that I'm inspecting or part of this left side property here. It, I, I suspect that it's part of this left side property, but even so being, I still want to let our client know, just in case that wall were to become and completely fail, that soil is going to be, it's going to slip and actually enter this walkway area on the left side of this home. So. Retaining's wall retaining walls usually fail because of pressure pushed along the wall, lack of ties, and lack of proper construction. So something to look at when you're buying a house is always check these retaining walls to make sure they're not out of plumb. Let's take a look at this beam, guys. So we have a two-member built-up beam right here. So this is two two-by-sixes sandwiched together. And if we look down here, I don't, know, I don't know if you can notice it or not, but the beam is very wavy down here. So we definitely have some beam sag. And that's because of two different things going on. Number one, we don't have a column to shorten this span right here. So there should be a column right there. We'll show you that in a minute. And the beam, in my opinion, is just too thin to support the structural loads above. Now, as home inspectors, we're not engineers. But I can certainly comment about this. Um, but I do believe that we need additional column here. And one of the reasons, or the primary, primarily reason why, is because we have this beam splice. So this beam sl splice here needs to have a column under the beam splice to adequately support this portion of the beam. That coupled with the fact that we're so long in the span here. And also down at the end, you can notice a little bit of waviness too. If we move over here, we see this, um, this cleat at the top of the, uh, the column. The column is not centered here under the beam, so we're offset. Not a major thing, but definitely something that a uh, client may want to repair. Um, and we also have a crack in the beam. So we have a few things going on with this beam that are structural in nature for sure and that should be corrected and the floors upstairs are very wavy so we notice the floors are springy they're uneven they have sagging in them and that's because of this beam here it is inadequately supporting the home in my humble opinion so we'll try to see if they want to get an engineer in here to fully evaluate this structure but this is something that is important for sure if you're spending this kind of money on a home you want to make sure that the house is properly supported at a minimum. Our set of deck steps shouldn't have open riser backs like this. We should have closed riser backs and there shouldn't be any gaps between these steps that are more than four inches uh, apart so we don't get anybody tripping up the stairs and we don't have a child safety hazard. Also at this side of the deck right here, we should have a guardrail just like we have here, just for safety. A child can actually fall off those steps and cause great injury. Even an adult can. So this is something that is a must do just for safety. 
Basement walkout drains are important, and we see we have a drain here and just water stagnating, right? Nothing's going on here. We have going to be, we're going to have a little swimming pool right here, and we don't want that water to gain entrance underneath the basement walkout door. We do see along this door that we do have some delamination, so water has damaged the bottom of this door. But this drain is something that definitely needs attention, and a lot of times these drains will be obstructed and not work at all. So that's something that's very, very important. So if it's raining during a home inspection or it's raining when you're looking at a home, make sure to check out if you have a basement walkout area like this, that that drain is functional so water doesn't pool and collect right in this vulnerable area. Right side retaining wall here, soil pressure pushing on the wall. We see it's displaced several inches here. So if we eye up the wall, we actually see the top of the wall is being sloped this way. And why is that? Because our weep holes or drain holes are completely obstructed. So there's really no way to relieve that hydraulic pressure that's pushing on this retaining wall. It's not in failure yet, but if something isn't done to alleviate that pressure, all that water is going to collect here, push hy hydraulically on the wall, and that's the same mechanism that, that kills foundation basement walls also. So this is something that's going to have to be corrected because walls like this are very expensive. Under the deck, we have these footings here. We have a footing here. Doesn't look like we have a footing here. We're resting directly on the, um, on the patio surface, which is concrete patio. But everything is going that way. Everything is slipping towards the right side. So this is slipping too, and it's causing the deck to have a low area right up above here. So we, this support is problematic. So if we look on top of the deck, we have a, a low area. Our deck is sloped because of this, everything is transferred here, and it's slipping to the right side. We have an adequate footing here, no adequate footing here, adequate footing here. So this is something that should be corrected. We don't really want to see a deck support post going and bearing directly to the patio. We want to see it an independent foundation or footing like this so things can move around. It has an independent support. So if things like this happen where the patio settles, that deck post will remain where it's supposed to be and not cause problems or potential hazards to the deck above. Besides the settlement that we see at the front porch, this has three risers. So a porch with three risers, set of steps with three risers really should have a handrail. So most insurance companies are gonna require a handrail here. And that's something that, that home inspectors obviously look for, any safety issues. But even insurance companies are gonna want a handrail here. And I understand this isn't 30 inches, but we have three risers. This landing of this porch right here is considered a step so one two three we need a handrail here just to prevent hazards